Okay. Um, good evening to everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Please. Yes. Okay. Very good. So, um, well, we're going to start with the class. Got us from four tonight. Uh, just let me verify the ones that are here. I'm just seeing to Angela, uh, Lorena, Jose, and um, Isaiah. Okay. Welcome. Uh, guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I hope you have a good day today. Um, so, guys, yesterday I remember that I left a homework, right? Are you yes. ready for it? Yes. Yes. Lorena, yes. you said yes. What about the yes. rest? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you something because um, here in, in Zoom, we have some options, some uh, reactions that we can use button if you operate with something you can just uh, give it thumbs up or a uh, well you, you, you can use any emoji that, that, that you want in order to express something uh, okay or to react to something okay so um this is a, another options that we have here in order to see that you are just listened in, here in the video conference okay uh well lorena you were the first one who said that was ready uh, so, it, do you agree if you start first? Oh, me? Yes. Okay. Okay, very good. So, uh, well, go ahead. Okay. My phone is yours. I, 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 I don't have to say the, the meaning of the word. You have to explain, no? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I'm going to work uh, about the... Person. person is a person who or is something that is good for you. It's, it, it can be like uh, your food, it's wholesome, like um, your mental or your, um, your way to do. A wholesome person is someone that can be morally and emotionally, emotionally uh, a good good to be with that person and an example for that we, we can say he looks like a nice cool person young man and if you see like a like a food you can say a salad is a wholesome it's, it's wholesome to to our to our hair to our body to our to our to us or if you see a fruit, you can say that fruit, it looks wholesome. Like uh, it is look, looks like uh, ready to eat and then it doesn't any, 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 anything bad to your body. And that's, that's the whole for wholesome. I don't know if I continue with the notes next one. Okay, my apologies. I, I was I was muted. Yes, I, I was telling you that you can continue with not with the other one. Okay. Thank okay. you. Go ahead. My Go other on. word is forceful. Forceful uh, is an adjective that uh, express opinion, but in a strongly way, and it's demanding attention and or action ah, sometimes we use the word forceful yes when we're going to to talk about politi politics uh, you have to take a forceful ways to to do something like uh, leaders leaders need to be forceful to to or you can say if you have someone, your friend or your neighbor, someone, she's a confident and forceful leader. Sometimes we have people uh, next to us that they have a forceful uh, way to, to do, no? Not, not shy, not, not, they're forceful. And that's on. Okay, very good. Those were good explanations also and, and, and good examples using those words. Very good. Congratulations, uh, Lorena. So um, who's going to be the, the, the next one? Angela, you want to continue? Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead. 
Uh, good evening, guys. Good evening, teacher. Uh, my words is uh, wise having or showing the ability to make good judgment based on a deep understand, understanding and experience of life. Uh, the next word is wild. Wild. Mm -hmm. um, of an animal or plant living or growing in the natural environment, no domestic can or cultivate. Cultivate. Um, and second example of the place or region when it when the habitat on cultivar or inhospitable and experiencing of one more than. Okay, very good. Good, good examples, uh, Angela. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, let's get to the next one. You can raise your hand if you want to participate. Okay, Gen Z, go ahead. Okay, my adjective is, um, the first adjective is dedicator. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning of the dedicator is, is someone who is devoted to a particular purpose or cause. Mm -hmm. um, example, Carla is uh, Carlos is more that dedicator that Andres. Uh, dedicator to start it, that Andrews. Okay, we're good. Um, second adjective, it's sociable. Mm -hmm. um, it's someone who would like to meet, um, spend time with other part people. Example, Carlos is very social. She likes parties. Finish. Okay, very good. Good job, Gen Z. Um, okay, let's see uh, who else who wants to participate. Uh, Marcela, go ahead. Good evening. Okay. Hi, good evening. Uh, my ad adjectives are loyal and assertive. Uh, the first one, loyal, is someone who demonstrates fidelity to mm -hmm. someone. Yeah or something. Uh, for example, my father always said to me, I must be loyal to my beliefs and ideals. And the other one, Asarit, uh, is someone who knows how to be a self-confident person to express their feelings. For example, my grandmother had been an Asarit person before he got a dementia. Okay, very good. Excellent, excellent. Good, good explanation. Also, good examples. Congratulations, Marzella. Um, so, uh, who is going to be the next one? Next one. Okay, I'm just a uh, very funny year where we are a lot of people. We are, uh, if I see here the list, we're 16 people. Okay, and just, I guess, four or five had already participated. What about the rest? You didn't work on the activity? 
Uh, I'm seeing here to Jose Carlos, Jose Isaías, Elvin Eguizabal. What about you? You complete this activity? Mm -hmm. Mr. Torres. Okay, I, I guess uh, just some of you um, work on that activity. Uh, oh, Monica. Okay, Monica, go ahead. Good evening. Hi, My good evening. My activities are brave. Mm -hmm. A brave person is someone who faces their fear. For, for example, Leah is someone who is brave and intelligent. In other activity, Grumpy. A grumpy person is someone who does not tolerate other person. For example, Mario is someone who is grumpy and serious. He stole things. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for sharing that information. I don't know if there is someone else who wants to share the adjectives with us, the meaning of the adjectives. Um, the explanation and also the examples of it. Nobody? Nobody else? Me teacher. Okay, go ahead. Me teacher. Um, my life adjectives were witty. A witty person is someone who has an amusingly or ingeniously clever talk or way to do something. Um, for example, the comedian told a witty joke that made me laugh. Um, the second adjective was willing. A willing person is someone who's ready, ready or prepared to do something with enthusiastic. Um, for example, he is willing to die with him. Mm, okay, very good, good examples of it. Excellent. Um, anyone else? Anyone else who wants to share something with us about the adjectives? Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. So, uh, anyone else here who wants to share something uh, with us about the adjectives, about this activity that's supposed to work developing? No, nobody else. Okay. Well, guys, um, I'm going to share my screen right now because we have to work on some things here, are some topics that we have to develop. Just give me one moment. While I share my screen and also the material that we're going to be using and uh, to work today. Give me, give me just one minute, okay? To log in here. Okay, um, here we have. Uh, guys, this is the lesson and objective that we're going to be developing. Uh, just let, your, uh, let me know if you're seeing my screen or not, please. You see my screen? Yes, yes teacher. Yes, 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 okay, very good, excellent. So uh, we're yes, going to be working on lesson objective 1.9. Uh, here we have an it says, uh, by the end of this class, participants will learn how to express like and dislike using clauses with it plus variable clauses with 
when. Okay. First of all, we're going to watch this video about the uses of clauses with it and when. Um, and then we are going to be working some exercises. You're going to be joining to breakout rooms because we're going to participate with a dialogue that we are going to construct using these structures. Okay, but first of all, I will explain how to use it. Um, just let me expand this and also share the sound okay, here, there, and here we have. Okay, it says uh, clauses with it and when. Uh, pay attention to this video. Then we're going to verify the information here and also we're going to, I will give more explanation um, in some examples about the uses of it. Okay, pay attention to this. Hello everyone. In this class you'll learn how to express likes and dislikes. And you'll also learn how to express neutral things. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So let's say, for example, you want to express things that you like. Um, I'm going to use an analogy of a birthday, right? So a uh, quick example, I like it when my friends give me gifts for my birthday. I don't like it when my friends forget about my birthday. There, I just express the likes and dislikes, and I also want to be neutral about certain things. So, in order to do that, I'm going to use expressions such as, I don't mind it when my friends arrive late to a party. So, let's do the following. First, the first thing that we should learn, or that we should become familiar with, is some uh, vocabulary, okay? Uh, and so, let me do just that. Let me just present this quick vocabulary. If you notice, I've highlighted in yellow the positive. So for things that you like, you'll use expressions such as, I like it, I love it. When you're neutral about something, you'll use expressions such as, I don't mind it. And when you want to express things that you don't like, then in that case, you'll use expressions such as, I don't like it, I can't stand it, I hate it. So let me just quickly present the structure and how to formulate this kind of complex sentences. So when we say clauses with it and then we say clauses with when, well really what we're saying is that we want to express things that we like, that we don't like, or that we're neutral about at any given situation. So let me just present the structure here. What we want to do is we want to use clauses with it and then adverbial clauses with when. Uh, and we do this in order to express the things that we like, the things that we don't like, or the things that we might be new. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, we ha I had a, a couple of examples for you. I'll just continue on with making more examples. So, so what kind of things do you like? Well, um, in order to formulate this sentence, to express that idea, we're going to have a subject. In this case, I'm just going to say I. The subject could be any other subject, by the way. Um, I use a verb such as like, so I say I like it, and that's my clause with it. And then uh, the next part, it continues with when. This is the situation, um, when. All right, so let me just make that quick sentence there. So I like it when someone gives me a compliment. This is something that I like. As you can see, we have the first part of the sentence is the subject plus the verb and it. I like it. And then the second part of that sentence is, when someone gives me a compliment. If we quickly look at our vocabulary here, I could say, this could be, now, the, the idea about this is that this could be something that is true for you, this could be something that is not true for you. So we want to express the things that you like, things that you don't like, things that you might be neutral about. So I could use this vocabulary here, so I could easily say, I like it, such as the example here. I like it when someone gives me a compliment. Um, or I could say, I love it. So I'll, I could change the verb. I could change something else. Or I could say, I love it when someone gives me a compliment. Um, at the same time, I could also be neutral about it. I could say, I don't mind it. Right? Okay. I don't mind it when someone gives me a compliment. 
uh, and then again, you might be shy and you probably don't like it, right? So you might uh, have a negative point of view about that situation. And you might say, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it when someone gives me a compliment. And that's how you formulate this kind of uh, sentences. Um, again, you could be neutral about the whole situation. You could uh, you could um, uh, be positive about it. So you could like it. Or you could love it. Um, and um, at the same time, something could make you upset, right? Um, the examples that I gave earlier were I... So let me follow the structure here, right? So I'm going to say I like it when... Friends give me gifts for my birthday. Okay, so this is something that I like. So I like it when friends give me gifts for my birthday. I don't like it when friends forget about my birthday. Um, it doesn't bother me when friends arrive late to a party. Now what I would like for you to do is to think about all the things that you like and all the things that you don't like and all the things that you're neutral about. Okay, very good. So there, there we have the examples. Um, how we use the words in order to the following likes and dislikes, guys. But um, first of all, I, I just want to introduce a topic here, and is the adverbial clause. Just let me put it in this part. Okay, there you have clauses with it and when. Um, there is something. There isn't a specific structure that we use in order to express that something. Uh, to, in order to say that something, uh, well, if we like or if we don't like, if we love, if we hate. So uh, there is a specific structure, and you already know that. This is just using the subject word and it. Okay, then this is easy, right? I like it. I don't like it. Um, I don't mind. I hate it. Okay. Uh, I don't like it. So... Uh, there are just some examples of uh, phrases that we can use in order to express uh, any specific thing. Now, it, what I want you to focus on in this part is in the adverbial clause. Um, the adverbial clause, do you, do you know what is an adverb first? Do you know what oh, oh, an adverb works in a sentence or what is an adverb? You know that? The word that contains the verb. Yes, okay, good, good. What else? What's an adverb? Anyone else? Nobody else? Okay. Well, uh, Lorena, you, you are right with that, um, and I'm going to extend that explanation about the uses of adverbs. Adverbs are um, just specific words that in a sentence, the, the only objective that they have is to modify sometimes the meaning of the verb, sometimes the, uh, the meaning of an adjective, or sometimes they can be used um, or modify another adverb, okay? Uh, an adverb, uh, as the name it says, is just a word that is after uh, the, the verb, okay? Uh, but the main function, uh, as Lorena said, is to change the meaning of the, the verb sometimes, okay? Uh, sometimes we can keep just the same, same uh, meaning, but... Um, if we're going to just look for a definition, we're going to say the adverb is a word that modifies words, adjectives, and another la abuela. Adverb. Okay. La la abuela. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. So after we have defined what is an adjective and what is the function here in a subject, we are going to um, check this part that is called adverbial clause. What is an adverbial clause? Okay, um, an adverbial clause is a sentence that it's working as an adverb in order to modify something 
that we are referring to in a specific, uh, in another sentence, okay? We're going to say the main clause, okay? So, an adverbial clause, um, that sentence is gonna be always a dependent clause, okay? Or a dependent sentence, why? Because if we refer to um, that sentence, it doesn't have any specific meaning, it doesn't have sense because it doesn't have a, a specific content. Just take a look at this part, uh, the, the sentence, the one that, that, that um, the man just was providing to us here. It says, I like it when someone gets me a compliment, okay? I like it when someone gets me a compliment. What is the adverbial clause? The adverbial clause starts in when, okay? When someone gets me a compliment. If we just read that sentence, it doesn't have sense, okay? Because we don't have any contents. Where it's supposed that we're going to say that when someone gets me a compliment, okay? It is like something is missing there, right? Yes or not? Yes. Yes, right? So uh, it is like something is missing there. So in order to um, uh, add that sentence, that adverbial clause, we need to add a main clause or an independent sentence. In this case, we're going to use uh, some expressions such as I like it, I love it, things like that, okay? In order to express like and dislike, okay? So if we add that specific structure there in the sentence, we are going to have a meaning in the whole sentence, okay? I like it when someone gets me a compliment. So we are just, uh, if we say in this way, we are just uh, identifying something uh, that's going to be happening um, like, uh, we can say like, um, it's like a, a condition with a specific result, okay? I don't know if you, you're getting that, you're getting that. Like, uh, uh, for instance, when we say in Spanish, uh, like, me gusta, eh, yo odio, eh, este, me encanta. Sí, expresiones como esas eh, tienen un sentido en sí. Pero cuando nosotros simplemente decimos, eh, cuando alguien me regala, este, eh, o, o me, me da un agradecimiento, ¿okay? o, o un, unas felicitaciones. Cuando alguien me da unas felicitaciones, digamos, digamos este, esa, esa traducción de, de, de esa parte de la, de la oración. ¿okay? Y nosotros expresamos eso. Si nosotros no tenemos un contexto específico en el que nosotros lo estamos expresando, esa oración, a pesar de que tenga todos sus elementos correctamente, no tiene un sentido. A ese tipo de oraciones se les conoce como... Eh, oraciones dependientes. ¿Por qué oraciones dependientes? Porque necesitamos nosotros un contexto, nosotros necesitamos una idea para que todo el sentido de esa oración, de esa cláusula dependiente, este, eh, formen una sola idea. ¿sí? Nosotros podemos decir, me gusta cuando alguien me da felicitaciones. ¿Ok? Uh, Simplemente este, nosotros estamos utilizando dos tipos de, de oraciones aquí. Una que es independiente, que tiene significado por sí misma, y la otra que es dependiente, que en este caso, este tipo de oración necesita de una oración independiente para crear un contexto en el cual nosotros vamos a estar dando un significado completo. No sé si queda claro. Yes, it's clear, teacher. Okay, very good. So, um, ahora, este, nosotros tenemos uh, por aquí, eh, and we have two different clauses. The, the first one starts with it. It's going to be dependent clause, I mean, the independent clause, and also the, the clause that start with when, it's going to be like the um, dependent clause. Um, there are also... Well, here you, you can see like the, the formula 
that we're going to be using in order to structurate or formulate sentences like this. Uh, we're gonna use the subject, the verb plus it. Um, in this subject, it will be like all pronouns, all nouns that we want to refer to. Verse, we can use verse like, like, love, uh, don't mind. Uh, well, the, the ones that we were just checking sometimes before here in this video. Plus, when, plus the subject and the verb. If you see a subject in a verb, uh, it is the two basic elements that we use in order to structurate a, a specific sentence. Um, si nosotros observamos esa, esa fórmula en sí, nosotros vemos que tenemos dos oraciones eh, en las cuales, en la, en la primera, este, tenemos un sujeto, verbo y el it, que se convertiría, digamos, en un complemento. Y en la segunda tenemos el conector, la conjunción, el conjunctions, when, eh, más un sujeto y verbo. Be, sujeto y verbo son los dos elementos básicos que nosotros utilizamos para eh, crear una oración. Así que básicamente lo que tenemos aquí son dos oraciones. ¿Sí? Que una oración de estas por sí sola no tiene un sentido. So um, after this, uh, you're gonna check here um, some specific uh, e examples of it, okay? Um, you're going to go to the next check and there you have a, some description of it and it says, how do you feel about this situation? Write your own responses based on the vocabulary given. It says, I love it, I can stand it, it's made me happy. Okay, and here we have a, like the the dependent clauses like it bo it bro I mean it bothers me I don't like it it embarrasses me it doesn't bother me I really upsets me I mean it really upsets me and I don't mind okay just take a look of this it says how do you feel about this situation my apologies. This is the part that I want to explain. Uh, we can choose one of them. And, and here, the, here we have the example that I didn't mention before, that it says, when people talk loudly during a movie. Okay, so um, basically what we're going to do is just to join the independent clause with a dependent clause. That in, in this case, the dependent clause can uh, very uh, according to the information that we want to provide in order to express, as we saw uh, some minutes ago, likes and dislike. Just take a look of this part. And it says, how do you feel about this situation? How do you feel about this situation? Make sure you use correct spelling and punctuation. You may use, I love it when um, I can stand, when it makes me happy, when, it uh, bothers me when. So just take um, take uh, the the uh, the information so that we have for each item. That it says when someone gets me a compliment on my clothes. Uh, when people are direct and say what's on your mind. When people call me late at night. So basically, what we're going to do is just join in these expressions. The first one with each information that we are providing here. Um, as, you, as you can see here, all these sentences, and as I mentioned for this, uh, are dependent clauses because they don't have a meaning um, by their own. Is it clear what we're going to do here? Is it clear? Yes, no? You want me to explain this in Spanish? No, it's okay. No, it's okay? Okay, very good. What about the rest of you? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. So I like that you're um, understanding the, the, this part because this is these are just complex 
a topic sometimes because they are confused about the uses of it and how we form these kind of sentences when we refer to dependent clause, uh, to independent clauses. So uh, it will be just a little bit confusing. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, if it is possible, I will be answering each of them, okay? So we're going to move to this part and it's, this is gonna be a reading part. And uh, it says the amazing world of apps, okay? The amazing world of apps. Um, well, what we're going to do right now, guys, is a, a reading part, and we're going to be discussing about this reading. Um, I'm going to play this video, okay? Give me just one moment, and we are going just to follow. And, I, and then I will explain what we're going to do, okay? Give me just one moment. Okay, there we have. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll improve your reading skills by developing skills and identifying main ideas and understanding meaning from context. In this class we'll read an article about the amazing world of apps, short for applications. You'll take notes of new words and pronunciation of difficult words. I'll read the article for you but the goal is that you'll also read it making sure you're pronouncing the words correctly. After reading the article, your task is to complete the short quiz related to the article. So let's get started. I'll start by reading the article. Okay, uh, we, are not, we are not going to allow in to read the article because this is something that you are going to do here, okay? So um, any volunteer wants to start reading, uh, we are going to need I guess four for this part, one per each paragraph. So who wants okay. to start? Okay, go ahead, Angela. You're going to read the first paragraph. In 2010, the American dialect social shows up as the words of the years. App is short for application, it's a problem, for an electronic device like a smartphone or tablet, tablet computer, there are more than, I don't know, the pronunciation. 425,000. 425,000. 1,000. Apps that can be downloaded for entertainment. Yes, shopping, sport, score, and anything also you mean being interesting in. Apps are some okay, popular- stop, stop there, Angela. Okay. okay stop there. Uh, I need someone else. Any other volunteer? Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Any other volunteer? We wanna read just one paragraph per each one, okay? But I need just four volunteers. Angela was the first one, who is going to be the second one. Lorena, do you want to help us reading the second okay. one? Go ahead. Apps, apps are so popular because they can be used almost anywhere. Commuting on a bus, waiting in a doctor's office, or hanging out you know, at the mall. And all you need is your smartphone. You don't need to log into your computer or into a website. You don't have to set up your video game console. You don't even need a Wi-Fi connection. Okay, very good. Uh, there one. Any other volunteer? Yes, okay, excellent, Mr. Portillo. Go ahead. Okay, uh, most smartphones can hold hundreds of apps and you can use more than one app at a time. For instance, you can use a navigation app to find a new restaurant. A uh, dining app to look and the restaurant's menu. In a weather forecast app to decide what to wear to the restaurant all the same time. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Anyone else? The last one? Just for this part?
Who's going to be the next one? Any other volunteer? There's just one missing. Okay, well, I, I'm going to choose one. Okay, let me just verify here. Uh, Kevin. Kevin Garcia. Hello, teacher. Hi, good evening, sir. Okay, it's your turn. Can you please just read the last paragraph? Okay. One of the most popular apps on the list has been downloaded in more than 16 million people. In 2010, this app was played to 100 million new daily B app users or 1 billion, 2 billion hours a year. The Apple store began selling apps in 2008, which nearly 1 billion sold. In 2010, nearly 3 billion apps were sold at an average price of 2 you city not only are apps popular, they also profitable. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so um guys, there you have uh, uh this reading um article. Okay, uh, as you can see, this is a reading for the amazing world of apps. Um well, what are we going to do right now? Uh, what I want you to do is just to read one more time this uh, paragraph by your aunt, and you're going to tell me in just a few words, what is this article about? Um, you can write it down in your notebooks, you can uh, open uh, notes in your computer or your cell phones. So it doesn't matter where, uh, but you need to, um, if you wanna say this, it's like a conclusion uh, for this uh, reading part, for this text, okay? We're going to conclude, what do we understood about this reading part, okay? It could be like, well, we're gonna say like three or four uh, lines, so, and, and, and that's all. Just in a few words. Is it clear what we're going to do? Yes. Yes. Okay, what are we going to do? Yes, teacher. Okay. Do you want me to repeat that information in Spanish? You can say yes or not. You, no, yes, 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 for me. Yes, okay, it's so much better, right? Don't worry, don't be afraid. It, it, it is not like, uh, no es ningún problema para mí, este, da la explicación incluso pues queda, este, se entiende, se entiende un poco más eh, la, las indicaciones, así que no tengan pena. Sí, sí. Yes, teacher, thank you. <laughs> Muy bien, excelente. Bien, este, lo que vamos a hacer ahorita es, eh, hacer eh, una pequeña conclusión del texto que nosotros hemos leído eh, sobre lo que trata el texto en sí, ¿ok? Ustedes pueden escribir en un par de tres, cuatro líneas qué fue lo que entendieron de este texto, ¿sí? Sobre qué hace referencia. Ustedes pueden como hacer una pequeña conclusión, les digo, este, eh, sobre eh, este pequeño texto, y eso es lo que vamos a compartir con el resto de nuestros compañeros. Es una actividad para ahorita. Vamos a tener cinco minutitos, creo que es, es suficiente. A las 8.51 comenzamos a compartir las okay, ideas. Teacher. ¿Bien? Gracias. Ok, teacher. Okay. Bien, aquí vamos.
Okay, time is over. Uh, are you ready for it? Yes. 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 Okay. So, who's going to start first? Hey, you okay go ahead sir okay uh, my conclusion uh, about the apps uh, the apps are very important because they help us every day in our activity with the apps we can do many things at the same time and without leaving our house thanks to technology there are there are apps and our life is easier Okay, very good. Go ahead. That's all. 
Uh, that's all. Okay, very good, sir. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Excellent. Sir, give me uh, one number from 1 to 10. I mean, from 1 to 14. Uh, seven. Seven. Let me see. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, Jose Torres. Jose Torres. You're the lucky one. Mr. Torres, can you hear me? No, I guess so. Yes, 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 yes. Eh, eh, no, 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 no podía conectar el micrófono, pero sí, lo escucho. Ah, okay, very good. So it's your turn, sir. Do you complete okay. the activity? Do you, do you have your conclusion about this text? Eh, no, I don't, I don't complete this moment. For you haven't completed yet. Okay, you are working on it, right? Okay. Está trabajando aún en ello, ¿verdad? Yes, I'm working ah, okay. on this moment. Vale. Dígame un número del 1 al 14. El número 6. Número 6. Eh, Mr. Rodríguez, José Carlos Rodríguez. Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening, sir. Are you ready for it? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, apps is a short for application. It's a program for an electronic device and can be double and we can use for shopping, looking place and more. We can uh, use more than one app at a time. Uh, of the most pop popular apps was Angry Birds in 20, 2010. Okay, okay, very good. So, good, sir. And the last one, sir, give me one number from one to 14. 10. Number 10, okay, let me see. Marcela Linares. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good Marcela? Evening. Yeah, do, do, do you complete ready. the activity? Yeah. Okay. Uh, apps was a recent technology re revolution. Nowadays, it's impossible to think that anyone can be used an app or even on a cell phone. Apps have more our day-to-day -day live easier. And even though a um, simple app like Angry Bees, uh, can earn a lot of money and we can um, develop an app and we can earn money with that. Just that. Just that. Okay, very good. Well, good, good, good conclusion about this uh, topic. Um, okay, guys. Yes. As you were mentioned uh, some minutes ago, uh, how important are applications for it? Well, this year, uh, uh, as you can see there, well, we have a lot of apps. You can see that the numbers are, uh, and probably we are spending a lot of time in apps, probably in, in apps for social media and ads for buying things. And uh, well, this is uh, like large uh, numbers of apps that we can mention here in different groups and different uses for it, okay? But how important are they, right? Is the, la, eh, estas aplicaciones hoy en día, ¿quién, quién no tiene este, un, un, teléfono, un teléfono celular inteligente este, con, con aplicativos? Aplicativos este, muchas veces para todo tipo, para entretenimiento, este, eh, para redes sociales, eh, para compras en línea, este, aplicaciones eh, un poco dedicadas a, a, a finanzas, eh, un montón de, de, de categorías bueno, que se pueden mencionar este, relacionadas pues, a, a este tema. So, um, and just uh, imagine without living, without, without apps, probably, 
eh, things will be like uh, hardly or <laughs> we can say like like more difficult because if there are some things that are, are used for searching or, or reading or things that are just for educative or uh, we can say like for learning things uh, or even if we want to learn English too there are a lot of apps there uh, that we can mention but just imagine without having those apps without having those resources in order to research something in a few minutes we there is like a, an easy way to do it right now because sometimes well I, I just think and I, I just back to, to the past here in order to research about any topic uh, well what suppose that we were <laughs> people were doing in the past in order to research about something to a specific topic okay Imagínense este, eh, bueno, solo, solo, solo volviendo un poco al pasado, este, algo que, y que se dificultaba un poco, este, considero yo en el área de, de, de aprendizaje, eran este, las, las investigaciones. ¿Cuán sencillo es ahora digitar un par de, de palabras ¿sí? y obtener este, una biblioteca, digamos, casi ilimitada de recursos este, ya filtrada que nosotros podemos pues, simplemente leer. Claro, no todo el recurso que vamos a encontrar en internet pues, es, como decimos, reliable. Y, y no todo recurso que encontramos en internet pues, este, es muchas veces eh, un contenido este, enriquecido en conocimiento. Para ello nosotros debemos de aprender a hacer uso de, de esas herramientas y filtrar ¿sí? información. Tenemos una biblioteca bastante limitada, como les decía, que a un par de palabras pues nosotros podemos obtener información, podemos obtener cualquier este, cosa, podemos hacer transacciones. Así que ahí tenemos esa lectura. So, the amazing world of apps. So uh, guys, you are going to have an activity for tomorrow. This is going to be about, well, you're going to, to, to do something here. Um, for tomorrow, I guess, no, tomorrow, no. It's gonna be for okay. this coming Monday, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes, tomorrow we are not going to have classes. Well, it's gonna be for this coming Monday. So that's mean that you're going to have enough time in order to develop this activity. Um, you are going to write a tale in English, and you are going to send that tale in a, a Word document. Um, you're going to say that Word document using the WhatsApp group, and I will be reading all the tales that you were be, you are going to be sending here eh, to this WhatsApp group. Okay. Lo que vamos a hacer para este próximo lunes es escribir un cuento. Sí. Eh, tratemos de ser bastante creativos. Pueden hacerlo en, en, en un documento de Word. Si ustedes así lo consideran. Si no, pues, eh, si quieren, pues, facilitarse un poco. Este, o dependiendo de los tiempos que ustedes tengan, utilicen, pues, el recurso que tengan a la mano. Si quieren hacer este, en hojas de papel bono y después tomar la fotografía y compartirlo, pues, está bien. Este, pero nosotros lo que vamos a hacer es utilizar nuestra creativa, creatividad e imaginación. Y vamos a construir un cuento. Vamos a escribir, mejor dicho, un cuento. Eh, la temática puede ser de cualquier tipo. Ustedes la deciden. Eh, lo único que no debe ser más de una eh, página de papel. Bueno, debe ser un cuento bastante corto. ¿sí? No nos vamos a extender mucho. Eh, lo vamos a presentar este próximo lunes. ¿De acuerdo? Oh, Okay, teacher. Muy bien. Ahora, yes, eh, el método, muy bien, excelente. Ahora, el método para enviarlo, este, lo vamos a hacer por medio del grupo de WhatsApp. Ahí carguen sus archivos, por favor. Yo voy a estarlos leyendo este, este próximo lunes que ustedes los estén compartiendo. De preferencia, eh, yo sugiero que lo enviemos antes de que inicie la clase de este próximo lunes. Van a tener que viernes, sábado, domingo. 
un cuento bastante sencillo. Eh, dejemos correr esa imaginación, esa creatividad y pues eh, escribamos. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Tienen preguntas? Teacher, eh, quizás solo eh, en la plataforma, ¿Sí? en la sección 1, eh, como la última actividad, eh, In no da, eh, no da la, la opción como de corregir, porque eh, ahí obtuve como no el 100, digamos, y este ya no me dio... En esa es, creo. Ajá, esa es, ¿verdad? Ajá, y, y, entonces ahí pues ninguna de las respuestas supuestamente funciona y me quedó, no me quedó al, me quedó en el 92% en, en, en la plataforma. El 92%, vaya. El, es que está... El 92% creo yo. Ajá. Porque esa no me, no me sale, la, o sea, las cuatro opciones que hay ahí como que no, ninguna de esas fue ese. O no sé si porque de la primera vez me, no lo hice bien y lo quise corregir y me lo aceptó así. No lo sé, no me dio la opción. ¿Puede mostrar su pantalla ahorita? Permítame un momento. En esa, perdón, buenas noches. En esa número uno son tres opciones las que se, se toman. Ajá, ¿verdad? ¿verdad? Porque son, ah, son, sí. son de, son solo, de este, solo, opción, no son de... Sí, adelante. Solo, yo, solo okay. Wait Itself es la que no se selecciona las otras tres y ahí le va a tomar como bueno. Ah, ok, muchas gracias, porque yo solo había ponía dos y nada y, y, las, y las combiné, entonces no me quedaba. Entonces sí, sí lo voy a corregir. Esa era, maestro. Ah, excelente. Sí. Bueno, qué bueno gracias, que encontramos la solución ahí. ahí. Sí, gracias sí, al gracias. compañero, porque ya la tenía pues marcada. Sí, muchas ya, gracias. Realmente ya se había dado cuenta de ese, de ese fallo. Este, okay. No, bueno, no es fallo, de hecho, este, solamente de ese este, percance ahí de, 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 de las respuestas, uh -huh. sí. Porque, bueno, okay. estas tres serían las respuestas correctas que tenemos. Find in restaurant, okay. get restaurant menu, and check the water. Excelente. Muchas gracias, gracias. por compartir eso. Muy amable. Muy bien. Este, si no hay más preguntas, entonces vamos a dar por finalizada la videoconferencia. Así que nos estaremos viendo hasta el próximo lunes. Por favor, tratemos de hacer la actividad. Les va a servir mucho este, para adquirir pues, vocabulario y, y, bueno, del hecho de, de, de componer un cuento este, créeme, eh, ya la hora que estamos iniciando las primeras líneas, este, empezamos a, a construir nosotros un mundo imaginario pues, en el que podemos incluir muchísimos detalles. Así que este, nos vemos el próximo lunes. Bendiciones a todos, cuídense y adiós. Amén. Buenas noches. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.